it's great to see pre-grouping vans being brought to the market in this way. These are sure to find a very welcoming home in a great deal of model rail fleets. Hi there, it is so great to see you and I hope you are well. I'm Jenny Kirk inviting you up here to Weir Yard and today we've got the all new Rapido Trains wagon that's just been released and they do feel like they've been coming thick and fast from Rapido. They've really striven to uh, bring out quite a comprehensive range and actually that's just the way we like it. There's lots and lots of unique design pretty much based around pre-grouping wagons and that is something that the modelling market has been starved of for so long. Gone are the days where we can get away with uh, printing up a post-1923 wagon with a pretty pre-1923 livery. Rapido are doing it properly with those proper pre-grouping designs and if you're thinking well that's a bit niche actually you'd be completely wrong because an awful lot of the pre-grouping designs did actually last quite well into BR days not least this particular item the six wheel Southeastern and Chatham Railway brake van originally the first batch were built in 1898 with a single veranda for the Southeastern Railway and subsequent batches have improved upon that eventually adding a second veranda rebuilding some of the earlier vans with their single veranda to make sure that they were fit for the changing railways of Britain and they actually lasted right through into BR days and uh, the last one wasn't withdrawn until 1960 so that means it's quite a healthy slew of liveries from original Southeastern Railway right through Southern, Southeastern and Chatham Railway, BR and even BR Engineers. Rapido are doing them all along with some commissions from some of the retailers. We've got pretty much every version covered and also the preserved example too is being offered ready to run from one of the commissioners. So we're really quite spoilt for choice. And for so long we've been asking for something to match up with those pretty pre-grouping locomotives. Finally, we've got what we needed for the other end of the train. And I'd like to thank Rapido for very generously sending over an example to the channel so that you and me can take a good close look. Come with me in association with Trainomatic makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from... This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. And don't forget that we've got an affiliate link in the description box to help you find the uh, brake van that you see in today's video and all of the different versions that are available, including those really quite interesting early single veranda versions right back to the Southeastern Railway 1898 builds. And as a favour, could I ask that if you really like today's video, please do consider tickling the like button, sharing it, and subscribing to the channel. But without further ado, have Rapido brought to us another Sterling wagon? Well, the only way to find out is to take a closer look. After many years of asking for something to put at the other end of our pretty train of pre-grouping wagons and the pretty pre-grouping locomotive at the front, we have finally managed to start getting the brake fans that we needed. Rapido Trains has stepped up and has produced the originally the Southeastern Railway, later Southeastern and Chatham Railway version, and it's this wagon that they have sent over an example kindly to the channel for us to take a good close look at. 
The example that they've sent is the six wheel brake fan with the dual verandas with the Southern Railway post 1936 livery. This is catalogue number 931007. Rapido have designed the tooling to be able to produce a whole host of different detail variants and they will be releasing the dual veranda versions as part of their main range with Rails of Sheffield doing three different versions of the earlier Southeastern Railway, later Southeastern and Chatham Railway single veranda versions. Train Times Model Shop have commissioned number 2010 in the Southeastern and Chatham Railway light grey with dual veranda version as preserved at the Kent and East Sussex Railway, whilst the Bagnall Locomotive Group are doing the SRNI van number 4. Now around 25 of the single veranda versions were rebuilt later in life and actually these were quite a long lasting van with quite a few lasting right through into the BR period and were withdrawn up to and including 1960 with one survivor at the Kent and East Sussex Railway. In the packet we've also got some of these uh, label clips. These are there for the end user to apply as and when they wish to. And the reason these aren't applied direct to the van is that they seem to differ from one van to the next. So Rapido have made the decision to provide these as an extra part and uh, those who want to apply them can do so just studying photographs of the van they wish to represent. We've also got quite a comprehensive history of the van here on uh, uh, paperwork and uh, it's always nice to learn a little bit more about the prototypes. This particular version is the post 1936 Southern Railway livery which is really quite eye-catching. It's something that the Southern Railway rolling stock really had quite a unique design with the red ends and then the dark chocolate brown on the sides. These have a much more austere markings of the uh, uh, number and the uh, small insignia for the Southern with the S. And uh, it's nonetheless replicated really quite well with a lot of detail that's gone into these. And I'm told there is a full detailed interior, although it's not actually possible to view it other than by really quite staring through the uh, windows at the ends under the veranda. But uh, just know it is there. We've got separately applied handrails throughout and these really are superbly done. They're molded out of a flexible plastic so they do have a bit of give. And then we've got the footboards that run the full length. And these again very robust but quite springy so there's a lot of give. These aren't going to just break and shatter at a moment's notice. The six wheel chassis with that really quite tight wheelbase is accurately replicated and I do like the sharp detail that we can see there with the brake uh, rigging between all of the wheels with the clasp brakes that gave these quite a considerable braking force despite their small stature and is probably one of the reasons that these originally 1898 designed vans albeit with a degree of change over the building lifespan managed to survive right through into BR days. On the roof we have quite a prominent stove pipe and the heat shield surround as well which stop the heat from the stove from setting fire to the roof and the roof itself is finished in this grey which does capture the look of the original canvas roofs quite well otherwise it's quite smooth there's no rain strips or anything like that but it is a good representation. The plank detail really is crisp and sharp as you would expect from fresh tooling but Rapido have done an exceptionally good job. The buffers aren't sprung but they do model the spindly prototypes incredibly well and we've got couplings fitted into a slimline NEM pocket and all of the brake rigging comes factory assembled and as you can see there this is an area that Rapido have done particularly well with their last few releases. All in all, it really is a superb model and it's a great interesting van which is available in so many different liveries to suit from Southeastern and Chatham Railway right through to BR, including an engineer's black livery which is sure to be quite popular. 
with those special commissions also taking in the earlier single veranda varieties, there's definitely a wide choice available from this initial production run. With the wealth of Southeastern and Chatham Railway liveried locomotives out there, these are sure to find a very welcoming home in a great deal of model rail fleets, and certainly it's great to see pre-grouping vans being brought to the market in this way. When it came to running, I found the van just a little bit skittish over point work, and it had a propensity to derail on any change of gradient. And I put that down to no give between the different axles, no vertical play, and that means that it did have a tendency to kind of ground out on the center wheel and allow the flanges at one end to ride up. That said, it's something that is easy to accommodate if you run these slowly as per what the prototypes would have done and also just be aware of the limitations of a short wheelbase, six wheel rigid chassis. Other than that, it was great to see this Southeastern and Chatham Railway design brake van providing some welcome variety to the rolling stock here on Weir Yard. So we now turn to the scores and first up is build quality and actually this van is pretty robust with some great and innovative choices of materials for the different parts. It has to be said that even though some of these are molded in some quite flexible plastic they have held together quite well with the only little gripe I can find is that these plastic handrails do have a, just a little bit of a tendency to pull out you can see there one that's not quite happy sitting all the way home. Other than that, it is pretty nice. And these steps really did put up with some really quite heavy handling. The brake rigging was very robust as well. And all in all, it was a pretty nice presentation with some degree of robustness happily built in. So I'm going to give it a 9.8. On running quality, this was the only area where the van fell down, and I put that down to that rigid six-wheel base with no vertical movement, especially on the central axle, which made it somewhat skittish on the torture chest track in the centre of Weir Yard, which involves a number of changes of gradients, twists, turns, as well as some complex point work. So I'm going to give this a 7.4. On DCC fitting and innovation, well, DCC fitting is not applicable, but innovation, well, this has got it by the bucket load. There are so many different versions that Rapido have tooled up, and it really is a pleasure to see manufacturers taking the time to add in different detail options that allow them to produce more than just a generic version, but actually many different specific versions. And the Southeastern Railway single veranda versions appearing as a Rails of Sheffield Commission really is quite exciting, as I don't think that otherwise those vans would have ever seen the light of day as a ready-to-run item. For that, I'm going to give this 10 out of 10. On accuracy and quality of finish, Again, it's quite clear that there is a huge amount of research that has gone into this fan to produce all those different versions, and it is definitely not a compromise in any way. It's a lovely item of rolling stock with an exceptional level of detail, and I have to say that with all the different running numbers and versions produced and that comprehensive history included in the box for all to see, it is very much clear that Rapido have made an extra special effort on this fan and I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 for that. On value for money these have an RRP of £39.95 which may seem quite expensive for a single item of rolling stock but that's kind of where we are and let's stop for a moment and see all of that separately applied detail, the brake rigging, everything that's gone into it, loads of separately applied parts, separately applied handrails and that wealth of different detail versions. So I'm going to give this an 8.3. It is an expensive van, but you do get a lot for your money. And that gives us an overall score of 45.5, which is absolutely respectable for what is a really quite exciting pre-grouping van. And I'm really looking forward to the rest of the announced products coming through from Rapido. They're definitely not afraid of tackling 
what once might have been seen as quite niche items, and I think our model railway world is so much richer for these, and certainly these are likely to sell out just like a lot of the previous Rapido models, and if you're a Southeastern and Chatham Railway modeler, they're an absolute must to go with your C classes, H classes, and D classes, because these really are the thing that you need on the other end of your train. It's really easy to forget when you've got the pretty locomotives and those fancy private owner rolling stock, that actually there was always a brake van at the other end, bringing up the rear. I hope you enjoyed today's video and found it informative. And we've got a uh, affiliate link down in the description box, which takes you to Rails of Sheffield. If you like the look of the van featured today and want to pick it up, all of the different main range versions are available there, plus there are three special commissions of the single veranda version, including that quite unique Southeastern Railway 1898 build. And I'd also love to hear from you in the comments section down below. What are your thoughts on these vans? Do you already have one? What have been your experiences with them? Is there any particular points that you really like? Or are there any things about it that you don't think Rapido have got correct. Love to hear from you in the comments section down below. Maybe you've got a fleet of C-class, N-class, P-class, D-class, and maybe a H-class too, and also a Terrier. That's been in Southeastern and Chatham Railway livery. So many pretty pre-grouping locomotives. And finally, we've got something for the other end of the train. And a big thank you to Rapido Trains for very kindly sending over this example for us to take a good close look at. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take great care of yourself. Like, share and subscribe. Also check us out over on Patreon. And until then, you take great care. Happy modelling. Bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support is provided by This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon, but a special thanks go out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYMRish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papair, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, Jennifer Horton, Michael Rose, Trains with Nick, and Simon Snow. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.